Yep, I disappeared last week. My world was turned upside down with an unexpected turn of events with my dad. I appreciate all of the, the calls and the reaching out. The family that we've created here is a truly remarkable one with a lot of love and a lot of respect. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I just, I just needed a week to clear my head and, and get back into the swing of things. I did go fishing. Uh, I started back to work last Thursday. I fished Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I was off Sunday and then I fished every day this week. In fact, I drove home to make this video, but we're, we're approaching what I would definitely consider midwinter, especially here on the middle coast. It, the, the winter's kind of mild, November, December usually, but then January, February, that's when you get your, your real winter swing of things. So today we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about the, the gear that I use. We're gonna talk about the strategies, the strategies that I use to try to keep customers on fish consistently. We're gonna talk about the lures I use. We're just gonna kind of broadly cover those midwinter strategies. So speaking of dad no longer with us, I picked up some roles to fill, you know, in the family scheme of things. And for you guys that have been asking for merch, for shirts, for hats, stuff like that, that's that's about to be rolled out. And in my typical fashion, I can't just do, you know, shirts for the channel. I've got a grander scheme in mind. So that, that will be presented and rolled out uh, here before too very long. So let's go into the, the gear that I use right away. First and foremost, Sims waders. I've tried all kinds of other pairs. I always end up back with my Sims. I personally wear the G4Zs with the zipper. They're pretty pricey, but Sims has waders all the way down, I think like 200 bucks. I've never had anybody complain about them. Their customer service is top notch. Sims waders, love them. Tried everything else, end up back at Sims. And then I wear Sims wading boots. I like the wading boots because they're cut to you can still true to your size they still fit you good but they're cut to let the neoprene sock from the waders fit into them so sims waders sims wading boots you know is that's that they're the best out there i don't really have you know any any others that that are that, that i would go to in the in the winter time i find myself i don't carry as much gear in my box i try to i try to lighten my load i'm wearing jackets i'm wearing all kinds of stuff i try to lighten the load and so I really don't get into the wading belt. You know, a lot of myself and a lot of my customers, we don't keep fish, so I don't need the wading belt for the stringer. And that's just an, you know, an extra piece on me. So one thing that I've really gotten into liking is this is a weight, wading box strap, and it's made by Stinky Pants. And what I really like about it is it hangs across me like this. So right here, I can put my, my line cutters and my power pole remotes. This holds my hemostats. I really don't carry pliers in the winter. You can use these to bend your hook when you're corky or whatever you need to, but this is all I carry for taking the hooks out. And then down here, I'll clip my boga or something like that to it. Although I did jump in the boat the other day and my boga hit the edge of the boat, the, you know, the little part that you release a fish with, it hit it and it fell off in the water because I was wearing it on this and it was on the front side of my body. So I have moved to putting my boga here on the back. So when I get in the boat, my boga is behind me and it doesn't hit and, and uh, risk that. And then I got to brag on my people and I, I want y'all to understand this. I'm going to show you a lot of stuff throughout the course of this channel and throughout the course of this video. Yes, I am sponsored by some of these people. Nope, not sponsored by other ones. Um, you know, wh whenever I say, hey, I really like Grundon stuff, it's not because Grundon was the only company that was willing to work with me. It's because I tried a bunch of stuff and while a lot of it is really great, the Grundens is what I deemed, in my opinion, to be, you know, the, the better end. And, you know, it's, it's me, it's my opinion, that's it. But um, anyway, so Grundens sent me these thermals, okay? And they're, they're real thick, they're, uh, they're, you know, they're long, they're for, my, they're for my legs. I wear them underneath my waders. You could wear them as an outer, an outer um, garment. They've got pockets, they've got all that stuff. But I wear them underneath, and uh, these are mediums. I'm six foot, about 165. They fit me kind of snug, but I wanted that. And the reason that I want that is, whenever I'm wearing my waders, I want to, I want my layering to be as thin as possible, but as effective as possible. So I got these pants where they fit me kind of tight. One thing that I've worn for years and years is the uh, the Under Armour, the 4.0, the base layers, the pants and the shirt. And they've got, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, you probably will be able to, but they've got this real thick like waffle uh, design to it. 
and they've been really good. Um, but once I started testing out these Grundens, I find them to be a little bit more effective. I really liked them. But I wear them, I, I wear everything real snug, my base layer, because I want it pressed up against my body. I want it holding, holding a little, you know, that air entrapped in there. But th then whenever I put my other layers on, I still want to be thin where I can cast and walk and get in the boat and get out of the boat and all that kind of stuff. So I have been wearing the, the thermals uh, as my base layer. Now the water's been pretty darn cold lately, and I also wear ski pants and no particular brand. I got some at Sun and Ski Sports that, you know, they, they, were, a, they were a good, you know, good quality, but no particular brand, but I, I wear ski pants and then I wear my waders over that. So I'm wearing the, the thermal base layer, the ski pants, and then my waders over that. And one thing that I notice a lot of my customers don't do that I've started doing is whenever I put my socks on, I pull my socks over everything, the ski pants, everything. So that when I put my waders on, my pants don't roll up. And then at, throughout the course of the day, my pants don't ride up either. And that's something that I found to be really effective. But, but I, I'm really impressed with these thermals. My feet were freezing cold, but my legs didn't even have a chill to them, you know, the last five or six days. And then for my upper, upper garments, uh, again, it's the Grundens Thermal. It's a quarter zip. Like I said, you can wear this stuff outside or inside, but I'm wearing this against my skin as a base layer. And uh, it's been absolutely fantastic too. I'm, I'm super impressed. I'm really impressed with everything at Grundens. They do a, they do a great job. And then on top of that, I've shown y'all this before, but then, you know, the, the Bowie EX Gore-Tex jacket, it's, um, I need to do a full review on it. I've done one, but I never posted it on Facebook. I put it, I mean, on a uh, YouTube, I put it on my Facebook, but this jacket's done really well. It's, I've worn a lot of the Sim stuff. It was good stuff. Yeah, the, the Sims is maybe a little bit more lightweight feeling, but the Grundens, it's a three layer Gore-Tex and it, it just really holds up. It really does well. It does what I want it to do. I don't mind a little bit extra, you know, stiffness in the fabric as an offset to, you know, how well it performs. So I've been really impressed with the Grundens stuff. Moving on, what have we been throwing? I've been throwing a lot of Quirky, obviously. That, that's my buddy right there, that quirky fat boy. I throw the sinker more than anything. Um, I've been throwing the, the broken backs that, that Steve Brown still makes. Uh, if y'all aren't aware, Steve Brown is the son of Paul Brown who invented the quirky. Um, Mira Lure bought the quirky from Paul and Steve's still making the broken backs. So these, these are really good. Um, I did a video last week or a week or two ago that kind of talked about how I like to work them. Now, out of the boat, I've been throwing a lot of the, uh, the Kelly Wiggler ball tails, I throw these with a quarter ounce jig head on them and I've been kind of just bouncing them by, I'm kind of a twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. Uh, same thing, I've been throwing a lot of these, these bass assassins, the saltwater assassin. Um, this is, I think this color is 10W40, it's one of my favorites for trout. Then the DOA, I've been throwing a lot of the, the bigger paddle tails, I believe this is a four and a half inch cow shad. I've been throwing the three inch cow shads that I show you guys all the time. And then I've showed you before. I wish I had one here to show you. I'll throw a picture up here. But it's a it's a it's the five inch cow jerk bait. I don't have any with me because every one of them's in my boat. I've been using the heck out of them, and I just didn't have any extra laying here around my studio. And then you know the the DSL. I've been throwing a lot of the XL size. Come on, the XL size paddle tails. So whenever I'm throwing it out of the boat, I'm throwing the quarter ounce a lot. If there's no wind at all, I'll throw an eighth ounce where it kind of flutters and floats a little bit. Whenever I'm waiting, I'm throwing a 16th ounce, um, maybe an eighth. I don't really get on into quarters because we're in shallow water. So the 16th, if I really wanted to float or the eighths, if I wanted to stay on bottom real well. One of strategies, and we're gonna bust out the old playbook John Madden thing, like a lot of you guys say you like, but let's start off with a, with a broader look at things. It's January, the fishing is extremely hit or miss. Uh, one day can be absolutely fantastic. And the next day can be real tough, and that's because the conditions are changing a lot in January. The wind directions are changing, the barometer's changing, the skies are changing, the water levels are changing. Everything is just always, it just is turmoil right now. And so you need to really have a realistic uh, approach whenever, whenever you go out and understand that today could be quite grindy. You might have to really, really work at it to achieve your goal, and you could work all day long and, and not achieve it. So that's just... That's just part of January. So first things first, I don't want anybody to get discouraged because they went out and, and didn't have a good day. It, it happens. Um, I want to, uh, today, I want to say I went out Monday maybe and the fishing was absolutely fantastic. I went out Tuesday and it was the same. Everything looked the same, 
but there were a lot of differences that you couldn't you couldn't physically see and that that made a big difference in the bite we had to end our day a little bit short but um you know had the day progress i i, I feel like we still could have got on them but um, that's just the fact of the matter and so if you're really locked in on i want to go wade you need to understand that you may be hurting yourself before you even start. You really need to be open and flexible in January. You, it, it's just, it's an absolute must. But so, so what I've been doing in January is if I go up to a waiting area and I don't see bait, I don't see a color change, I don't see something I want, then the first thing I'm doing is talking to my customers and saying, hey, I know you guys put on all your waders. I know that you are, you know, want to jump out and wade, but if you want to catch fish, we might need to do something different. And, you know, there, there's, I've had several of my trips say, all right, let's do it. And, and we've had good days, you know, congrats to Seawalk on a, on a big fish. And then I had Mr. Belasis with me on Monday and, you know, he showed up all ready to wade and, uh, it just, you know, it just wasn't going to be there waiting. And we went out drifting and, and had a great day. And so what I'm doing, especially right now, if the tide, the tides are really low, the water's cold, we're on a warming trend right now. So I think the next day or two waiting could really be good. But, you know, we hadn't had that warming trend in the, in, the, in the past, or we've had a little bit of a warming trend, but it hasn't been enough to really affect anything. So what I've been doing is I've been going out and drifting, and, and then when I'm drifting, I'm trying to hedge my bets there again. So I'm looking for, you know, some bait flipping or some color changes. And right now, when I'm finding a color change, I'm finding some bait flipping around in it. And those color changes have been really, really, really key to catching our fish. And they've been good, solid fish. And again, um, if you don't know what a color change is, if if you're out there and you see some pretty green water and then there's a streak of, of dirty water butted up against it, that's the color changes I'm talking about. And then you, you'll see the, the, the color, it'll go in a line sometimes and have like a dip in it and then go in a line again. And in those dips is where we've really been doing well with them. Wading wise, I'm starting out, out on the edge and um, you know I'm, I'm fishing deep early and then moving up shallower as the day progresses and the, the sun comes out and all that. Now, again, in January, things can change a lot. So uh, if you're out deep and you're not catching anything, but you see bait flipping around up shallower, well then obviously make that move. You, you need to always be fluid and, and, and understand that, that this time of year, the fish aren't quite as scattered out. They're, they're in places for particular reasons. And so uh, if you're not finding what you need in one spot, but you see something promising somewhere else, Go give it a shot, you know, grind it out, bounce some plastics on bottom, throw some corkies. I'm not throwing a lot of top water right now. All right, so I pulled this Google Earth screenshot out and I usually pick places that I haven't fished or maybe I haven't fished very much so that I can kind of give you all an unbiased approach on what I'm thinking of or, or you know, it's somewhere that I haven't picked apart already. But the first thing, the first thing I'm gonna notice here is this line of grass right here. Now, usually what that's telling you is out here, it's going to be deeper because the the grass you know it's like going to grow at a certain depth so as it drops off then that grass is going to quit growing there so that's kind of that's kind of the take that i take from it right away so we're going to consider that to be the drop off there when i show up first thing in the morning let's say that we have an outgoing tide and then we've got a uh, let's let's make it a south wind with it so we, we've got the tide and we've got the wind both pushing this way. Now, I'm not overly concerned right now with wind direction as long as it isn't, you know, a, 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 a really strong wind that I don't have to fight with. I don't want to have to fight with that wind, but the direction doesn't mean as much to me. But first thing in the morning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive in with my boat and I'm probably going to park it somewhere around here. The reason being is I'm going to get out and I'm gonna be fishing this drop off right here first thing in the morning. And I'm gonna do it pretty slowly and pretty methodically so that you know even if the fish aren't really wanting to bite, I'm covering every piece of ground. Right now, this time of year, you know, in the summer, spring, and fall, whenever I fan cast, I'm gonna kinda of hit, let's say, I don't know, two o'clock, you know, uh, 12, 10, nine and kind of do that but and then as my body's moving with whichever way i'm casting it it'll vary some but i'm hitting pretty broad strokes in the winter time whenever the fish are, are probably going to be a little bit less aggressive then i'm going to be hitting you know two o'clock 1 30 1 o'clock 12 30 12 and so forth and so on i'm going to be a lot more methodical 
with my presentations. If I'm seeing bait or something that makes me feel like there's fish in the area, then I'm probably gonna hit it across and then hit it back before I move up. When I move up, I may only move 10 or 15 feet and I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna be real methodical on, on fishing out here um, first thing in the morning. But as the day goes on, as the sun comes up, as it progresses, that's whenever I'm going to really start paying attention for, for any kind of you know little bait fish up in here. And it doesn't have to be many. It can be two, three, four of them. And that's really gonna get my attention and, and give me a reason to move up. Now, again, when I move up, I'm still gonna be really methodical with my, you know, my 10, 11, 30, 11, 12, 30, 12. I'm gonna be real methodical with that. And I, I'm, I'm gonna really grind it out, assuming that I'm seeing anything that tells me a fish are there. As I'm waiting, I'm, I'm watching out here in the deeper water for bait out here. So, you know, if I can, if I can see some bait flipping around out here or, you know, any kind of, any kind of color changes, if I can see it, if it's starting to streak up out here, then I'm really thinking about getting in the boat, moving out here, switching to my plastics and drifting across those streaks. If it's all possible with the wind and you can drift down the streaks, that's even better. But a lot of the time the wind is going to have the streaks running parallel to you. So my drifts might only be 100 yards, and then I'm gonna reset and I'm gonna do it again. Right now, the tracks on my GPS, they look like this. That's what my tracks look like because I'm drifting across something right here. So that's incredibly important right now, again, is to understand that we are in a more difficult time of the year and be paying attention to what's going on out there. But again, if, if, if I can see bait and whatnot up in here, then I'm, I'm really gonna take all this into effect, or into account, I'm sorry. Now, over here, again, this isn't somewhere I've been, but I could take this to be a clump of shell right here. That shell, when that sun, whenever the sun hits up on it, look at that pretty sun. When the sun hits up on it, the shell is going to heat up faster than this grass or sand out here will. So that's another area that I'm gonna be really interested in coming and, and pounding on right there real good. So the, the, the fact of it is, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is, again, be, be really adaptive to what's going on around you. If the water's cold, fish a little bit deeper earlier, give that water a reason to warm up. When the water warms up, that gives the fish a, some reasons to move up. If you're out there first thing in the morning and you're fishing that drop off, but there's bait flipping around all behind you on the shallow stuff, move to it the bite windows are pretty short this time of year you know what they always say make hay when the sun shines and no pun intended here but you know whenever there's some bait or something happening get to it when you see that piece of bait flip try to cast where that piece of bait was at and and that's that's pretty well my game plan in january uh, i'm not gonna get real fancy i'm not gonna move a lot i'm gonna fish drop offs i'm gonna fish color changes i'm gonna fish bait and i'm gonna do all of it with my feet moving pretty slow and so that, that's my approach on January. That's my midwinter, midwinter strategies. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Hope 2021 is going okay for you. And we will catch you on the next one.